Well, for today. Hallelujah. You know, before we leave today, I want to give you some prophetic things that the Lord has shown me. And you can be seated if you like. I know some of you are thinking, man, we just got stood up. Ain't we leaving? <laughs> well, you can if you'd like. Um, I, want to, uh, I want to tell you something very quickly about. Well, you don't, I, you know, sometimes we say you remember this. Well, you don't remember it. You've read it many times. The man at the pool of Bethesda. You know, he was, it was there in five covered colonnades, five porches. And once a year, an angel would come down and stir the water. And whoever got in the water first got healed. And when this man had laid at the pool of Bethesda 38 years, and uh, every time he started to get in the water, someone got in his way got in the man's way of healing. The problem was stated very clearly. He said, every time I start to get in, another man steps down in front of me. It was stated, the problem was very clear. Every time I start to get something from God, a man gets in my way. Whenever God's going to do something with people, it's always a man that gets in the way. Now, look over at Luke 5 real quickly before I do this other. And put it up on the screen. Luke chapter 5, and I think about verse 16. We could all see it real clear there. And um, let's, let's take a look at that scripture just a minute. I could read it out of, out of my Bible, but I'd like for... Uh, you to see it. Let me be sure this is where I want to be here. Amen. Amen. Let me just look here now. Hang on. Hangeth thou on. <laughs> okay. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Now you really should underline that in your Bible. The power of the Lord was present to heal who? Who are them? The doctors, the Pharisees, the doctors of the law. It's all of them. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. Now watch this. Go on to the next verse. And behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken with a palsy. And they sought means to bring him in and lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude. The multitude of who? All the Pharisees, the doctors of the law, all the religious leaders from every town out of the Decapolis and Jerusalem and so forth. There's really nobody else mentioned here. So the man could not get in to get before Jesus, mainly because of all these religious leaders had clogged up every door, every window, every place that a man could possibly get in. They had stopped it up. Now, here comes a real problem. A man wants his healing. And it's obvious what Jesus is preaching over in the middle of that mess because they said the power was present to heal them. So he's over there preaching healing. So who was the lame and the halt and the blind that was there that day? It was the Pharisees and the doctors of the law and the religious people. Not just spiritually. Physically, too. But I mean, my God, if they can't get healed, they ain't going to let you in. So they went up on the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. 
So they tore the roof off. Bunch of high-performance people up there. And when he saw their faith, now their faith was so big, he saw it. Makes you wonder what that looks like, don't it? He said unto him, man, thy sins are forgiven thee. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, that made every, every list of heretic that the, they could have possibly published. He said, man, your sins are forgiven you. And watch the next line. Come on now. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, because that's who clogged up the doors and windows. Saying, see, he's unreasonable. They're in reason. Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts... They didn't say it, they thought it. And he answering said unto them, how come you reason in your heart? Now he's going to tell them what they were thinking. And watch what he does. Whether is it easier to say thy sins be forgiven thee or to say rise up and walk? Well, what is easier to say? What he's saying is, is it's the same power that's doing both. Next line, watch now. But that ye may know that the Son of Man, that just infuriated them because he's calling himself the Messiah out of the book of Daniel. <clears throat> but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy couch, and go into thine house. Next line. And immediately he rose up before them and took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house glorifying God. Now we'll stop right there before I get into this other thing. Remember at the pool of Bethesda, what was the problem? Men. Every time he started to move, a man got in his way. When it, this man needed healing at this house, he can't get in because the doors and windows are clogged up by men. Man is always in the way. So he says, his friends say, I know I got a brilliant idea. Tear the roof off and we'll just lower you down on a bed. So Jesus is teaching and debris starts falling. And he's waiting on all of those to come get healed. Nobody's moving. They just don't want nobody else in. Took every religion in the Decapolis in Jerusalem to keep the healer's mouth from getting outside those walls. All of them gathered up trying to stop one man. Well, the government tried to seal one tomb, too, with a signet, but it didn't work. And so watch what happens now. You hadn't seen it yet. If you had, you'd be shouting. I know. I know. So he said, rise up, take up your bed, go your way. Go to your house. He gets up, takes up his mat, and everybody's still blocked up. Every door and every window in that place. But he walked out. How? Because religion had to move and let him out of the place. Men got out of his way and he walked out. Because he was healed, he absolutely had to get to a place where men get out of your way. You cannot allow them to keep you bound down. What in the world could have ever convinced the magnificent body of Christ to put a sign on their door 
that said, take your temperature before you come in our sanctuary. What could ever take this magnificent creature, the body of Christ, the very empowerment of the risen Christ, and make it to where you couldn't, the sick couldn't get in. There's nobody could get to God. Nobody could get to the power. What could make it that way? Men got in the way, and they began to say, you can't speak in tongues in our church. You can't prophesy in our church. You can't stand up and give a message and somebody else interpret it in our church. You can't do this because this is not, this will get out of order. You must listen to one person standing there because we know it all. And a man got in the way. So it's going to take somebody with some nerve to get up on the wall, the ceiling, and tear it apart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've got to stop letting men get in your way. Women are always, always seem to be the first ones that run to see what God is doing. And a lot of their, not all of them, but a lot of their husbands sit around with their t-shirt on and watching the ball game and refuse to move. And so the, the little wife ends up staying home and just dropping her head. All because couch potato won't move. <laughs> you ladies... When the Lord moves on you like the one woman we knew of, she was called to preach. She laid down on a couch because her denomination said she couldn't. The pastor said she couldn't. They all came over to her and told her, said, this will pass. Just ignore it. It'll finally go away because women can't preach. And she laid there sick. She laid sick. I don't know if she ran a fever or what. She laid there sick for days over this. And she never preached because a man got in her way one very famous man minister in the days gone by said about Maria Woodworth Etter Mother Etter was amazing she'd go into a trance on stage and she'd stay there she'd stop in mid sentence and just go into a trance and after I think they said one time, days, she never moved. And after days, a crowd of thousands gathered and she picked up in mid-sentence and started talking again. And one very famous minister sent word to her and said, you know you can't preach, women can't preach. She said, I'll quit being jealous and get up and come on. <laughs> you let a man get in your way. Don't let men get in your way. Men, you do what God's called you to do. Don't let any job, don't let any body, don't let anything get in your way. Okay. All right. Well, that's probably enough of that. So I'm going to... I want to give you this prophetic word if somebody will hand me my staff right there, please. Now, thank you. The, let's just thank the Lord a moment. We'll thank the Lord. Yeah, if I could get you to help me. Yes, that's it. That's it. That's a good word. Honor the Father. Honor Him. Oh, Lord, we thank You for Your goodness. We thank You for Your mercy. We thank You for Your kindness. And we thank You, Lord, that You are still speaking to us in prophetic utterance. Yes, Lord. I will. Someone came up to me in Nebraska 
and caught me as I was leaving the stage, walking down the side. And I had given a word, a prophetic word on the 11th hour, I think, about Mount Rushmore and something wrong there or something going on there. They stopped me going down the aisle and said, the governor, and told me what governor, sent you word and said to tell you what you didn't know is what happened at Mount Rushmore and he told it and sent me word and he said he just wanted you to know that you were spot on about that so the prophetic utterance and prophetic things that are said a lot of things are very top secret and they cannot be exposed at the time but when a governor of a state sends you a message to tell you what happened they're listening to God and they're listening to the prophetic but don't be so quick to dismiss wild things you hear especially if you know they're real prophets when Hank Kuhneman sat on the platform at uh, on Flashpoint, I believe it was, and he just said something about a convoy. And he just came up out of his spirit. And now look what happened. When Timothy Dixon said it'll rain fish, and it did. April 30th. I had no idea what I was saying. So just because you hear a wild prophetic word, don't dismiss it because you don't know what's behind it yet. Just because men name somebody the president don't mean he is. You remember that. Annas and Caiaphas was the high priest of the days when John the Baptist and, and, all, and Jesus was walking in the flesh. They were the high priest. They were political high priests that was split down the middle and they had to elect two of them because they divided the people if both of them didn't become the high priest. What kind of foolishness was that? And yet John the Baptist was the real legitimate Old Testament high priest. He was the last one. And it's amazing how John the Baptist was beheaded in Arabia. A lot of people don't even know that. By an illegitimate Herod. Jesus called Herod a fox. In Hebrew, it's jackal. Because he was illegitimate. Fox in Greek also talks about being an effeminate. And sexually perverted. So don't just dismiss things just because you, you, you may not agree with them. But if you start supporting someone that God don't support, then you're going to reap the harvest that they, they reap because you were the supporter of that thing. Hear the word of the Lord. The fall of this wicked administration is at hand. And they will fall. They shall not have, they shall not have this forever. This will end. We are in the time of the big lie. A lying spirit has gone forth to be a lying spirit in the mouths of the advisors of different kings and leaders. Making them think that they can win this unscathed but remember an archer drew a bow at a venture and smote the wicked king between the joints of the harness 
Remember when you start lying, fraudulent everything, fraudulent illness, to kill with a lie, willing to kill in the Ukraine to bring about a new world order. When lies have reached this level, then a lying spirit is in their ranks. Now, with their tongues, they will deceive, their tongues will deceive their hearts. And they will act on this, act on a lie, and they'll fall by it. And the dog party will begin to lick blood as fast as they can to cover it up. But it will be recorded, says the Lord, and people will see. Already, already dogs are about to vomit from the blood they've licked up of these wicked people. To cover their tracks and cover their actions and cover the things they've done. Already the dogs are almost full of blood for what they've consumed from the days of Bill Clinton all the way to now. But they will throw up just like dogs do. They'll not be able to eat their own vomit again. For they'll throw up body parts. And men will see them and men will throw up. Hear the word of the Lord. The time of the big lie has, is upon you. For what you see is a lie. What you experience is a lie. Do not lie with dogs. Hear the word of the Lord. Hearken to the word of the Lord. For even now you'll see jackal's eyes cross. Even now you'll see these things start. One will leave. I told you, says the Lord, the one who stares at the camera will walk off. The time is upon you. Where will you be? Stand. Stand. For the earth, so shall it quake. Stand. For temperatures now will begin to drop at unseasonable times. And you will wonder, what is this as crops die? For you'll see it. For the Midwest, the wind will pick up and the wind will blow. And it will blow hard. For dust will wrap itself around. In the time of the big lie, droughts. But yet the word of the prophets will stand. And the word of the prophets will hold and rise hearken and behold it has begun did you think it would not come did you think that it would not come for you held an event that was called the return did you not believe that you had returned you stood and said, if we do this and return to our God, He will come back and heal our land. Did you not believe my part of it would happen, says the Lord? Why should you speak on a return and yet back up on the result? Stand and declare, my God is heard, my God is real, and my God will deliver. I see, I see graves, I see. For behold, an incident in the sea, and a ship in the sea. Behold these things, says the Lord. And whether you know this or not, Putin is looking at me. For I will tell him what he needs to do or not to do.
What are you seeing? A bear with a hook in his jaw being pulled around trying to move into a place of safety but there are jackals leading a bear with a chain could it be yes what do you mean prophet ask me says the Lord I will tell you Jackals leading bears by the jaw. A jackal leading a bear by the jaw. A jackal leading a bear by the jaw. This is what's going on, says the Lord. This is what's going on. Yes, I see cold. Remember, remember, for I'm about to do something that's very bold. I'm going to shake gonna shake the nations of the earth I'm gonna shake the nations of the earth I'm gonna shake the nations of the earth I'm gonna shake the nations of the earth listen to him shake Feel the tremble. Feel the burn of the nations. G7. Can you say G6? Hallelujah. Come on right now. I'm not sure exactly where I am. There's something stirring in the spirit and it's stirring huge. I don't know if you can sense that or not. But it's stirring right now in the dark realms. It's stirring. And I don't mean dark realms as in wickedness. I mean dark in the mysterious darkness of, of prophetic. Of prophetic moves and environments. There is a government official listening to me right now. You hear my voice right now and you know you're listening to me right now and you know who you are. The Lord says you better leave that prophet alone. You better leave him alone. You better leave him alone or all your greatest fears will come upon you. Come on and lift up your voice in other tongues and pray. Come on and just begin to lift up your voice and pray. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. I heard the Lord say these things. You have a bullet with my name on it. The Lord said, can you say Ananias and Sapphira? For the Lord says, you need to search these two people out and understand the message I just gave you. We are moving now into dangerous times. Not dangerous times for the church. Dangerous times. Like Ananias and Sapphira. 
I'm going to tell you this, and then I don't know if I can say anything else. There's a um, Timothy Dixon was sitting on a platform one day, and Brother Timothy is a good, godly man, powerful prophet. He was sitting, in, and he's a friend of mine, dear friend. He was sitting on the platform one day, and a man was sitting behind him. And Brother Timothy, if you ever hear him tell it, if you've ever heard, he turned around, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to him, and he turned around and looked at the man behind him or there with him somewhere on that stage. He said, the Lord said, get your house in order. In seven days you'll die and turn back around. And he said, oh, God, he said, I was just almost sick. He said, what have I said? Seven days to the day. That man pulled up in the parking lot of the church, put his car in park, and fell over on the dash dead. We are moving into the times when people who dare threaten prophets, dare try to stop the, the prophetic word, dare stand in the way of things like this, dare would lie to the Holy Ghost, dare to do these things, dare to move in these areas. We're moving into those days. So I saw someone in the government watching. I saw them watching me. And then I saw someone who, who had a contemplating a bullet. You will choke on it. You will never fire that. It's not me I'm concerned for. You should bury the bullet because it's a seed for you. And so I, I, we're moving into these, these dangerous times. But the level of the church is coming to a place like Peter and John at the gate called Beautiful. When they came to the lame man and said, Silver and gold have I none. What that's talking about is, is I don't, there's not enough silver and gold in the world to buy your legs. That's what he's talking about. He said that money can't fix this. He said, but such as I have, give I thee. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk and took him by his right hand and pulled him up on his feet. Stop right here just a moment and tell me one thing. What prayer did he pray? What prayer did Peter speak? Tell me a prayer he prayed at the gate called Beautiful. There wasn't one prayer that was prayed. He said, I have something. I have something. I'm conscious of what I have. And I'm going to give it to you. And right there, when he made hand contact with that man, he gave him what he had. And it bought his legs. Jesus paid the price for those legs. And he pulled him up on his feet. And the man, lame from a womb, grew tendons and muscles and, and began to walk and leap and praise God. That's the level of power the church is moving into. So when the church moves into that level, the incidences of Ananias and Sapphira come on the scene also. The only reason they haven't happened yet is because the church hasn't moved to that level. Because it was the same man who looked at them and said, did you sell the land for so much? Yes. Did you give it all? Yes. He said, why would you lie to the Holy Ghost? Fell down dead. His wife came in, did the same thing. 
said, the ones that carried you out, your husband out, now will carry you out. Same man who had a consciousness that he could command, and it happened. There's times of prayer, and there's times of commands. And you have to know which one. And you have to know where. When do you command? When do you pray? So remember the prophetic words today. I never prophesy with malice in my heart. Never. If I, if, if I think I do, I won't say anything. I'll just wait or let God give it to someone who can. But the prophetic word is true. And you'll see. You will see. Yes. Sister, I can't. I just caught a glimpse of you in the spirit. Would you stand up right there? No, right behind you. Yes, yes, you. Would you stand up, please? Those lights are kind of in my eyes right here. Spirit of the Lord has something to say to you. The Lord says these things. It says, though men have made your mind skeptical over the years at times, the Lord said, I saw your heart and look at you, dear. For you're very special to the Lord. And he longs to bring you into a future that right now you can't even hear. But you're going to step into it smiling at first and then laughing while you start to run. So the Lord says, go ahead and just throw up your hands, give it all to me. And he said, I'm going to show you how to run. Nobody will ever trip you up again or hold you back. And they will never cause you the pain you suffered or the lack. For the Lord has had his eye on you. And he put you in my eyes as I walked by that light. Because the Lord said he wanted you to know that he's already won your fight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a praise. Give him honor and glory. Do his name. Amen. See, just like that. The Lord had a word for someone, and that's a word that he wants to bring to pass. Lord, bless the people today. Bless them all in this room. Bless them on the other side of those cameras. Lord God, bless them around the world, those that have a heart for you and have set their minds to understand and their hearts to seek you. Bless them, Lord God, with, with healing in their bodies miracles in their families, finances in their bank accounts, and legal matters settled instantly. And I give you praise for it. And Lord, show them that you are God. And Lord, let those who have decided to be Ananias and Sapphira repent today that these things may not come. Lord, on them. And Lord, those who are like Simon the sorcerer, who thinks the power of the Holy Ghost can be bought. Tell them, Lord, that they may repent, lest they be lost. And I give you praise and honor and glory for it. Now I cancel every assignment of the devil, every assignment of the occult that's against our partners. That's against the partners of this ministry. I call them null and void and cancel them now in the name of Jesus. And I give you praise for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.